Hello, everybody. <laughs> oh, wish me luck. <laughs> so we're having some internet issues today. I'm not sure what's going on, but I am back in business now, so that is a wonderful thing. And welcome to everybody. We're going live in many different places. Hello, everyone. My name is Tiffany. I'm the Tipsy Artist. Okay, so we've got a couple more minutes until we actually officially start. So I'm going to do some checking here on my YouTube for one thing. Kind of see what's happening here. And I don't see that I'm live on my own YouTube. I wonder if you can't see yourself live on your own YouTube. Um, oh, I don't know. Not sure what's happening. So I know I'm going live. I just don't see it. So I'm going to make an announcement too that the chat, I hope it's disabled because if you do have any questions, be sure and leave them in the comments. I cannot interact with my chat through the Restream service. It does not work. I can't see it. And so I don't want anybody to get their feelers hurt. So, hey, honey bear. Yeah. Can you give me a huge Can you actually check on YouTube and just see my channel if you don't mind lever make sure it's all golden all right oops I want to pull my ears off all right so hello everyone again I think it is oh yes it is 12 o'clock it is 12 noon so hello everyone my name is Tiffany I'm the tipsy artist for those of you who are just now joining us um, we are going to be painting a beautiful painting today. Here it is. So this is a countryside setting and I see that, I hope y'all can see me. I I don't know if it's because of the storm, but I'm freezing up on my screen so I don't know why and I don't know if I'm frozen for y'all, but it is, there I go, I'm back. Okay, so if it stalls, just know that I'll go over instruction again, get re-caught up or whatever we need to do as we go through it. But again, let me show you the painting. All right, so here is my beautiful fence post here. This is definitely a scene. Getting a thumbs up, awesome. Okay, so this is definitely a beautiful scene from Oklahoma. And uh, I added a few little flowers. <laughs> so I'm not sure if hydrangea actually grows by a fence post but in my world it does so again this is your world you can make it as beautiful as you want to and I definitely added a few more flowers of different colors too so you're welcome to do that um, let me go ahead and talk about all of our supplies here and again want to say hello to everybody and welcome everyone and please leave any questions you have for the class today in the comments if you're on uh, YouTube, I cannot see, it should be disabled, but I cannot see or interact with the chat. Uh, so again, please make it a comment and I'll be happy to get back with you uh, just as soon as I can after the class. All right, so there is that. Let's talk about supplies. So I do uh, sell some really awesome kits that go with these and I put them at many different price points so that you can, depending on uh, your supplies that you have at home, you can buy as needed so let's just say you paint all the time you have everything that you need you would just want the traceable so you can go to our digital section and just do this as a download all good or we actually have a transfer pack to where I give you basically everything that's needed to do the traceable transfer process um, so that's really helpful if you have all of your painting supplies uh, so what I've got here is, I've got this set up, we'll get to that here in just a moment, uh, but then we also have the full kit, which absolutely comes with everything that you need in case you have nothing and you don't know where to start. So it comes with all of your paint and all of your brushes, I'll do a little visual here, and pencil, marker, all that good stuff. So it has everything that you need in there, the canvas. All right, so now let's go ahead and go back to this part here. This is where we're working from. So what I've done is I've prepared this a little bit and I've got tape just right up here at the top. And this is just graphite paper is all it is. 
So I've just placed this over the canvas and then I place the line art on top. I only tape at the top. That's really important because as you trace, you want to make sure that you get every spot and sometimes obviously if you some people I've noticed that they do this they just go crazy and tape all over and then they realize uh oh <laughs> I can't see how far along I am or if I have missed a spot so just leave it completely loose you do want to make sure it's very secure here but then I leave it completely loose to where I can constantly lift up and check my work oops let's go this way oh there we go <laughs> All right, so I've got mine done. I did go ahead and work ahead. Now let's talk about how I did this. It's, again, very easy. All you need is the pencil that comes with it. And I basically just trace. So, you know, you don't have to know how to draw like I do. So you can just take the line art that I prepare, the drawing that I prepare for you, and then you just take your pencil and then you just go ahead and apply pre normal pressure will do just act like you're drawing trace right over every single place that you see a line and then you'll be all good so again that's why it's helpful to keep checking your work make sure you're all good there and again I've worked ahead so that you wouldn't have to just sit and watch me draw for a really long time so I went ahead and did that now I'm gonna go ahead and take mine I'm gonna go ahead and lift this off just like that just kind of gently it's going to take. Oh my goodness. Okay. And then I've actually switched to canvas panels. So I actually really love them, and here's why. So much easier to frame. They can go into any photo frame, and I love that. So you can dress them up instantly. Um, also, they ship really well. There's no damage with shipping, and they're just wonderful. I just love them. So been working with these a lot more so anyway here's my canvas panel it's already done now I will tell you that sometimes when I paint I will do a hard line edge with the permanent marker which comes with your kit some of my stylized pieces have a really strong hard line around all the edges and plus it does a bleed through and that can make it super beginner friendly however with this painting that we're doing today it is a softer look and I don't want to have to contend with the hard lines of the permanent marker. So I'm going to not do this today and I'm going to leave it just the soft graphite line work here. And then what we're going to do is I want to make sure that you can have a really strong close-up visual of this while I paint. So I'm going to say tools. <laughs> for now well you'll still see me paint but I'm gonna actually take the camera down over the top to where you have a beautiful bird's eye aerial view of the process while we work and you can see it really well so I think that's really helpful all right so I'm gonna do a little switch here all right so we're gonna go wee with the camera wee. all right so we'll get We'll get situated. I've been working and also I have to, ooh, there we go. My office is now a paint station and everything. It's really interesting sometimes. Like, oh, where to put everything. All right, let's put this up here. Still need access to that occasionally. Okay, now let's get this nice and close. Oops, I've got a little arm tripod here. Let's get it situated. All right. All right. So that gives you a really nice look while I work. And then I'll give you a better visual too on our supplies here. So I do also want to make sure I've got a nice bucket of water nearby got some napkins um, and or a rag then we've got brushes nearby I have lots of different brushes for sale of course I've got the kit but also if you want to use my Amazon site I've got a lot of favorites there that I have also uh, picked out too so if you just love to buy on Amazon you can you know piece it out that way all right we've got our paint I've also got paint plates nearby and just real easy, nothing fancy. 
And then I did go ahead and do a little bit of, well, a lot actually, of my titanium white and my Mars black just to begin with. I wanna make sure I've got that ready to go. And then let's take a look at our paint. Okay, so this is our paint set. And we're gonna get it opened up here. This is what it looks like when you get it in the mail. By the way, these uh, videos do stay up forever. So if you need to come back and watch this as you do it later, you certainly can. And that way it allows you to pause it as needed or rewind, whatever you need to do to like go back over something. All right, so we've got lots of, oops, there we go. See, lots of beautiful colors there. I'm gonna actually set this off to the side. Here's my little cartoon girl. All right, um, let's see. My husband actually painted that. I'm just gonna brag a little bit. So my honey bear painted that, and he used to ink comics for Marvel. So I am one lucky girl. All right, so here we go. Ta-da! Let's see here. You know what? I forgot to do my entire hillside. <laughs> it's okay. I'll, I'll just paint it in later. All right, so here we go. I'm going to get started with some titanium white. Let's get a visual on that. All right, so this is our titanium white, and let's take a look at how it comes to you. So first thing first, it comes with a little foil top there. Now you'll wanna look for that little piece that lifts off, and you can just lift. You don't really need, I know I gave a visual of a lot of titanium white. I do a lot of painting. You don't need as much as I have. Uh, but I would say a good uh, half dollar size dollop of that would be perfect. All right, and then we're also going to get some primary cyan blue. Now on this, I will do all right, about a nickel size to quarter size dollop of that. And then I'm also going to take some Viridian. This is a beautiful, uh, like a teal color. That's what it reminds me of. There's a lot of green in it, but there is a a little hint of blue in there too. And I don't need that much of this to begin with, so a little pea-sized dollop of that or dime-sized dollop of that. And these are really small paint tubes compared to, well, they're not, here, let me just give you an example of what I'm used to. So I'm used to this. <laughs> so by contrast, yes, small. Um, but so I have bad habits with my big tubes. I tend to leave the lids off and there. I'm always okay there because it just hardens up over the surface and protects the paint. That's a bad habit, but I'm guilty. But on these, I have to have very good habits. I have to close the lids or else you could lose your paint. So take good care of your paints. They will last a long time, but you do have to make sure you put the lids back on those. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and get out I call this my mama brush. We have a little family here. Let's, let's talk about our little family. Okay, we have mama, and then we have little buddy, and then we have little bit. All right, and then if y'all have been to my live classes in my studio, we sometimes do a lot bigger paintings there, and so I have my Big Daddy brush there, which you can still order this on my website, but this is Big Daddy. All right. Okay, so nice and flexible. Let's bend it a little bit. You can also moisten the brush a little bit with some water. All 
And then I'm going to go ahead and start to mix this up. I just patted with that paper towel there a little bit. All right, now let's pick up a nice big dollop of white. And then let's also pick up a little tiny touch of that blue. And then a little tiny touch of the Viridian. Let's mix all that together. Now that Viridian mixed in there will just give a slight hint of turquoise, which I really love for my sky. I just find it to be quite a bit more decorative. To me, the sky blue doesn't feel as good in my home, so I love, again, a little bit more of that turquoise quality. I'm a big fan of turquoise. All right, so I like to kind of push it to that level. Get that hint of turquoise in there. All right, now you'll also notice, of course, I'm working this way so that you can see it really well. Also, I'm really enjoying working with paintings that are just flat on a surface because it allows you to do a lot more play with the water in the paint and you don't have to ever worry about water runs. So that is something else that I'm really loving. So you can have a little bit more water and get more of a watercolor look. Acrylic paint can be very versatile and can also have a look of watercolor too if you add more water to it. it gives you some play time with that. All right, so I've got my sky color. That's basically what we're mixing up here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just sweep this all the way across my sky. We're just gonna get that foundation down to begin with. Get a nice solid coat of this. And then I want this to show through. So I'm gonna add a little bit more water here. And look at that, it's gonna show through a little bit peek through, a little touch of water, and then I'm, I will have some greenery that will peek through here in the background, but I'm going to go ahead and extend my sky just pretty much all the way until the tops of the roses here, and that just gives me a little bit more flexibility with where I want to start my ground. Because it doesn't always have to be the same way every time I do it. And then as I'm pushing on this paint, getting that nice solid color, I want it to have a nice opaque finish. So I'm gonna take my brush and turn it more over to the side, parallel to the canvas. And that will give me some really nice coverage here. and just crisscross that back and forth. Crisscross. Nice finish there. You can also kind of push in a little bit of some white back and forth here too, a little cloud cover. We're gonna to start to work in actual clouds here as well. But I'm gonna get my sky in first. Again, just kind of crisscross this over the surface. And I'm going to finish out my sky right about there. And I'm going to use my brush now with the line edge that will come up around that fence post. ahead and finish out with a little bit of that crisscross action and then if you run into some white peekaboo spots then you can go ahead and a little bit of water helps extend that paint and helps it become a little bit more fluid and fill into the background I want to say hello again to everybody out there. Welcome, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us today. All over on Facebook, YouTube, there's many different platforms. 
Periscope, Twitch, Twitter, Daily Motion. There's a bunch. And especially if you happen to see something that says chat, uh, please ignore that. I tried to make sure that was disabled. This is the YouTube people I'm primarily talking to here. But please leave a comment uh, if you have any questions. Little words of encouragement for us all. <laughs> I can't see the chat right now in YouTube, and I'm so sorry for that, if it is going. All right, so we have beautiful sky now that's looking quite lovely. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and start to work in some clouds. All right, so I've got my mama brush. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse her off. Now to clean a brush, let's talk about this a little bit. Let's go ahead and push round and round and round, go in a nice little circle. That helps release that paint. A little bit of firm pressure too. Okay, that helps release the paint. And then of course you can kind of drag off the edges. I don't want to get on the top of the paint and get any excess there, but you can also use your paper towel to help release some of that paint and clean it up as well. All right, so I'm going to take my little rag here, get that cleaned up. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a little bit. So this is a brand new brush, and let's give it a little bit of moisture. Make sure it's nice and flexible, because sometimes they're a bit stiff when they come out of the packaging. And then also Little Buddy would be a nice tool that we could use too. And then this is another uh, brush that I love. It's available on my favorites channel with all my Amazon choices. You can find it there. I'm gonna go ahead and push into the white paint here. and just kind of push it into like little circles. I'm kind of laying the brush a little bit more over to the side, put a, a flat side of the brush. You can also use the smaller brush for this too. It's just a little bit more time consuming because it is a smaller brush, but the small little bit brush can also work beautifully for this. And the beautiful thing about clouds is that they are never the same and they can look quite unusual, but for the most part, they are kind of rounded and billowy. So I'm just going to make a decision here to go ahead and do a little bit of the ending here at the base. And then let's do a little bit right here too. And then now I'm going to do a little bit of a tap, tap, tap on the side. Just going to give it some nice little texture. So I like to call this sometimes like a little bit of a pounce effect. Pounce, pounce, pounce. It's great for stress relief. Very therapeutic. Helps kind of soften out the edges of the cloud. Do a little bit in here. It's going to kind of peek through. And just kind of barely, be really gentle, gentle hand. And then just kind of tap that out. Softens up those edges. And we'll just keep pushing into the white a little bit and then tap, tap, tap here. And then as I look at it, I think, hmm, I might want a little bit more cloud. And here, kind of trails off the side. All right, and let's, let's just 
disconnect those a little bit there. And if you're having a little bit of some, like I'm going to be coming back in with a little bit of blue too around the edges. But right now I'm just kind of working in broad strokes here. Pouncing in what I like. Again, most important thing is just really have fun with it. And then I'm going to actually just work in a lot more of this white right over the top. I do want some heavier white in the center. And that will thin out as I get closer to the edges. But definitely in the center, I definitely want more whiteness. You can see how that's really making that cloud pop. So I have, I guess, for lack of a better word, it almost feels like there's more density of white in the center of the cloud. And then as it gets towards the edges, it will become a bit more transparent. So more white in the middle. So I just pick up a lot more and just continue to tap that out. And hello again to everybody out there joining me today. I hope you all are having a beautiful day and a great week. And again, if you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comment section, wherever you're at. That I can see you later after the class and I get back with you. Alright, now I'm going to do a little bit of a, some softening, so I'm going to bring in a little bit of water and a little touch of our blue that matches our sky. And then I'm going to work back into the outside of the cloud. Same brush, this is our, call this a little bit brush, just a round Teclon brush, but I'm working back in a little bit of that blue, kind of softly patting that in. Tap, tap, tap. And as I come back in around the outer edges of each cloud, softening those up a little bit, I'm also just giving a little bit more of a textural tap to our cloud. Now, as you're watching me do this too, you'll notice that I'm obscuring, some of the leaves are getting a bit obscured. And so a helpful hint, if you are a beginner and you do not wanna lose those lines, then uh, I would recommend using your permanent marker uh, to make sure that those always pop through and they certainly will. And you can do that initially with your trace. So after you trace it, you can do a hard line around those. All right, coming back in with that turquoise again, just kind of tapping that out around the clouds, bringing in a little bit more texture. softening the edges. And you can feel how easy this is for beginners because it's basically just a really nice therapeutic side tap. So you don't have to be intimidated by it. Just a matter of layers. I'm applying the paint on the side of the brush. Just a 
quietly tap that out. As soon as I get near that edge again, it just really gives a nice softness. Makes that cloud definitely stand out, but also just kind of has a really nice transition between the cloud and the sky. Gives a nice textural surface to the sky, too. Light, gentle hand here. Remember, there's no right or wrong shape for these clouds. So they can definitely look different, have a different shape to them, different curvature, it's all good. Just continuing on with that same stylized little textural effect there so that it matches the rest of the sky. really pretty. So we have a beautiful sky now. Let's go ahead and rinse out. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and push in some beautiful green now in the base. So let's get that going. All right. All right, we need some cadmium green. It is springtime in our world. So I'm going to that little pop there. Let's go ahead and do a little pea size amount. Let's grab a little bright yellow green as well. That's always kind of nice to pull into. Size them out there. Alright, and we still have a little bit of that Viridian for fun, and then I'll tell you what else comes in handy um, will definitely be some of this black and white there too. The other thing I will mix up as well will be a brown. So, let's talk about how to mix brown. Alright, this always kind of surprises people a little bit, but. Brown is a dollop of cadmium orange and black. Let's take our little buddy. Let's grab a nice dollop of the orange, dollop of the black. Let's mix those two together. That will give us a really pretty brown color. That's a really dark brown there. Now you can add a little bit of white to this. That will lighten up your brown. You can also warm this up. You can see how pretty that is. Really pretty brown there. You can also warm this up with a little touch of yellow. So let's grab some primary yellow. Here 
here it is. So you can take a little bit of that and you can feel how that warms it up too, just slightly. So now you've got some really fun tones to kind of work into your grass here. All right, to begin with though, I'm gonna start big. Let's go back to our mama brush and let's go ahead and take a nice dollop of our cadmium green and some white. And let's do some of that bright yellow green too. Let's just start with that. And we're just gonna go ahead and work this in to our little hillside here. Let's work on the flat side of the brush. Now this first section of color, all this color blocking, work this in. We're just getting the broad strokes down, getting good coverage. We'll definitely come back in and bring in texture. But again, for right now, we just wanna make sure that we have complete coverage here with that beautiful green color. As I get near line edges, I can use the line edge of the brush. And to help preserve some of these shapes here too, you can add a little touch of water helps keep it more translucent, see how that just bleeds right through, but then also does help provide a little bit of that base color coming through there. I will avoid the roses though. I don't want the green in there. I don't mind it being a transparent wash through the leaves, of course, but. Put this cord up here. So I'm going to go ahead and, this is a leaf, so I can go ahead and work through that. Just grab a little touch of water, get a little bit of that transparent finish through there. Again, nice coverage, but still, uh, still allows our line art to kind of peek through. As long as I'm in the pretty large areas here, I can use my mama brush. I will have to probably tap in with my little bit brush here in a moment to get into the smaller areas. But mama can work in flat side or also line edge to help give you a little bit more precision. kind of crisscross that out almost feels like you make little tiny X's again this is just our base coat Lovely. All right, so now let's go ahead and add, you know, a little bit of warmth and color to this. You can keep it really bright or you can kind of subdue it a little bit. So I'm going to be adding a little bit of this yellow, little touches of brown here. Kind of work that in. A little bit of a cross stroke as I work that in. So we mixed up our brown earlier again. That was an equal mix of our cadmium orange and our black. A little bit of that primary yellow. And we'll just 
just crisscross this kind of back and forth. We're also going to be working in a little bit of a pounce of that, but I'm gonna save that till the very end. Still just kind of working on that base color for the foundation here. Continue this on here to the other side. All right, again, first layer. So it looks a little bit raw still at this point. That's all we want for right now. All right, so that gives us a nice base. And don't worry, because there's a lot of texture that still has to come in. So if you're a little concerned, like, hmm, <laughs> that looks a little flat. Uh, and it does at this point, that is correct. So, but we're gonna give this a little bit of a moment and we'll work back in texture later. But for right now, we're going to shift gears over to our roses. All right, so I'm gonna come in with my little buddy brush here. And I want some primary magenta. Right, let's do a little touch of that, little pea-sized dollop of that. grab a nice big dollop of white, a little touch of primary magenta. And let's go ahead and work this into this rose. I'm gonna take that around in like little bits of curvy circles all the way around. like little half circles to begin with. Okay, quite lovely. Let's do one more of this color down here. Again, this is my primary magenta and my white. Just kind of push that into little half circles. That is the foundation of our rose. Right, now I need a different color. Let's go ahead and get some of that primary yellow that we had earlier. A little bit of our white. Even more white. Really pale, pale yellow here. And then I'm gonna put that down into this one. Again, just little half circles here. You want more texture over the surface and hold that brush more out to the side. That allows that parallel side of the brush to face the surface area. Puts, leaves more paint on the surface area. Right, so that's really lovely. I'm gonna do one more with this really pretty light yellow. Oops, I'm adjusting my camera here. Let's do that again. Okay. Again, sweeping little half circles. Alright, 
Now that is a nice foundation. Now we need texture over the top. All right, so I have my little bit brush again. There we go. That's my puppy dog back there. Her name is Miss Ida. All right, let's take a little bit of white. And we're just kind of pushing that all the way around, holding the flat side of the brush, and then just sweeping half circles. Work that kind of towards the middle. That's that texture of the rose over the top. Let's do the same thing up here over the pink. Again, little half circles here. Keep working that around the rose. And leave a little bit of that texture too. The thickness of the paint on there is really nice. Again, little half circles. Lots of layers to this. So that's our first layer. Now we need to work in a little bit of a contrast with the darkest shade. All right, so I'm gonna come into these pink ones. Let's go ahead and touch into our primary magenta. Same little bit brush. This is the smallest round tack-on brush we have here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just push in what looks like a little comma and then lift off with a light hand. Same thing here, a little comma. That's what it feels like. That's that shadow in the middle of the rose. And then we can start to kind of just drag it around for little touches of shadow that come around our petals. Little half circles again. And if you feel like you rework it in one you know, direction more, if you get too much dark, you can always kind of come back in with you know, more light white too to help soften it a little bit. So now you're getting some of those nice shadows created with the petals. Keep taking that around. Really pretty roses here. So you can even push in a little bit more white too if you want to come back in with that. And I think it's kind of nice to kind of come up, you know, little curves because they're not perfect circles. They're a little bit lumpy around the edges. All right, now the shadow in the middle of the yellow is going to have a hint more of that brown to create that shadow there. So I'm rinsing out, cleaning my brush. Now let's take a little bit. We're gonna go into that brown. All right, we need that little comma right in the middle. There it is. And again here, comma, lift off with a light hand. Again, just little sweeping half circles. And if you wanted these roses to be white too, you could also use like a really light gray and white. That's another option. And I'm also going to come in with a pop of more bright yellow, so there's more of that bright lemon yellow. Add a little bit of white to it. It must be too, too bright. But I 
plant a little bit more of that here too. Just little touches more. I've got some really pretty bright yellow roses in my garden right now, and they've got some pretty vivid yellow in there. Sweep that around. So it's kind of nice to have maybe a little bit of cream, a little bit of bright yellow. Those are really fun. Oh, so nice touches there. Now the other flower I want to make on here too is the hydrangea, which I just love. It's one of my favorite flowers. So certainly optional. You don't have to include it here. If you love it as much as I do, you'll want it. Okay, so here is our violet. We'll start with that. So we'll have a little touch over there by the magenta. Even if they touch each other, it will be lovely. They play well together. All right, so uh, let's see. Actually, I want a little buddy brush. Let's go a little bit bigger. All right, so here's little buddy, a uh, little bit of white, a little bit of that violet. Let's start light there. I just made some lavender, so I added a little touch of the titanium white to this is our violet right here. So I lightened that up. And then with this, I'm just going to kind of pounce in a little circle. So hit on the side of the brush. And that hydrangea flower is definitely like, looks like a big ball. And I'm tapping on the side of the brush. And then come back into that white, tap that over the top. That's a great base. Now, need more contrast. Let's go ahead and touch into that violet. And while the paint's still wet, we're gonna tap that darker violet out to the side. Round that out. Again, just little taps. Now, the other thing I like to do here is a little bit of some primary cyan blue that can tap in there as well. Looks really pretty with our violet and our lavender. Makes like a really nice little periwinkle. So I'm just going to tap out a little bit of that over the surface. going to bring in a little bit more of that contrast throughout here. If you get too heavy handed with the dark, come back in with little touches of white to add little highlights. A little bit of a different color pattern coming through there.
All right, so that's a really pretty hydrangea. And I just came back in with a little bit of that primary cyan blue. Just add little touches of that here and there. so pretty. I love it. All right, now let's go ahead and bring in our little bits of green for the leaves here. All right, so we want these to be a little bit darker and more dramatic. So I've got my little bit brush here. Now I'm going to pull in, let's grab a little touch of water. Let's moisten this back up a little bit. See how dark our Viridian is? This is Viridian. Get a visual on that one more time. Viridian. And then we have our cadmium green. And then also bright yellow green. Have those here. So I'm now doing cadmium green and Viridian. Let's spin those together. A little twist. And let's go ahead and work in these little leaves. The line art is there for us. Look like voluptuous bees. So we come out to like a little curvy point. Let's go ahead and work that in there. And then I just pushed into a little bit of that bright yellow green. I'm going to go ahead and just push into it while the paint's still wet. And now push into a little bit of that bright yellow green. While the paint's still wet, get a nice soft blend in there. All right, let's squeegee out that bright yellow green. Now let's go back to Viridian and Cadmium. Load up our brush with lots of that going to work into this little leaf. And again, it's just a lovely, curvy, looks like, you can see how that kind of looks like making the letter B out to a point. And then let's just go ahead and fill that in. And a little bit of that bright yellow green right over the top. Soft blend right in the center. base, cadmium green, viridian, equal mix there, and we're going to work that into that beautiful curvy little V. And you can see how it's a little bit, the darker the color there, it's a little bit more translucent, so I want that bright yellow green to pop in over the top again, do a nice soft blend right over the top. It just really covers better. It also gives a really pretty nice little light highlight right over the top of that leaf. And then it leaves that darker outline around the edge, which is just a nice stylized technique there. Pretty little leaf coming down here. Again, starting with our Viridian and our Cadmium mix. And then we're going to pop in with that touch of bright yellow, green right over the top. Let it kind of softly blend in there. All 
that. So it's super dark to begin with. Let's bring in that highlight, bright yellow green, right over the top while it's still wet. Gives you a nice soft blend between the two. Just kind of push it out into a little bit of a curve. And again, foundation work will start with equal parts cadmium green, viridian. And I'm also twirling out the brush a little bit too. That helps bring me that nice fine point. Working out those little baby leaves. Kind of trailing there on our fence post. Let's bring back in that highlight, bright yellow green, right into the center. A little touch and then a pull. So let's see, where else do I have? Kind of like leaves that come down here. A little bit of water to my paint to help it be a little bit easier to manipulate. Again, that dark green mix is viridian and cadmium. I'm bouncing the weight of my hand on my little pinky here too. As long as you put it in dry paint, that can be a really helpful little tool for you. Coming back in for some of those highlight touches. So this is that bright yellow green that comes in over the top, just a little highlight, nice coverage over the top of the leaves. Still using my little bit brush.
We have that darkness of the vine coming in, so I'm going to add a little bit of some water here. I've still got that green, but I'm going to go ahead and mix it up with a little bit of brown. A nice fine point, so I'm going to twirl that out. dark here. This is that fence that's kind of running through. Right, we're going to accentuate some of these little leaves here with that little touch of that darker brown. out, go back to our cadmium green and our viridian, go right back over the top here, and a little hint of that bright yellow too. A little bit of water helps the paint move, become a little bit more fluid. softly blending back in that little touch of brown there. That bright yellow, little touch of water. Twirl out the excess water. You don't want to get too much water on there. into a little brown here, making a few little light little branches that come off. We've also got more greenery that will need to come in and around here. So creating a little bit more density with this so, and a little bit more water working back and forth between the brown and the green. Occasionally coming back in with a little bit of that bright yellow green to add a little bit of texture in there. Let's bury that leaf pattern here.
sometimes with that bright yellow green, I just kind of press on the side of the brush. It's a nice little textural effect. So it's looking good, should I get a lot more texture in there. I still have a lot more texture to work into the groundwork here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and shift over to my lovely little fence post though. Let's get a little bit of work done there. I'm trying to kind of work all the way around this. All right, so let's see, let's get a nice palette of color. We have a lot going on here too. But I'm going to do another mix to get some freshness happening. Alright, so we need some more brown. So let's get out our cadmium orange. Nice big, almost quarter sized dollop of that. Nearby, so I'm going to go ahead and take a nice big scoop of that. Let's get two scoops. And we'll take half the orange, mix that together with some brown. It's a nice rust color. Let's deepen it to more of like a chocolate brown. And we can add more black to make it a darker, richer brown. I see like that over there. Right. And then we want some of our white nearby. So we'll be touching into that a little bit as well for the lighter shades of brown that come through here. That's our titanium white. And then we will also need our primary yellow. Okay. Alrighty, so, oh, and you know what? Okay, I want a little bit more white than that even. Because we'll need some gray. Go ahead and grab a nice big amount there. Touch some of that black and white to get a nice gray to work into. All right, so what I've got a lot happening here to where I've got my gray that's mixed up. That was just titanium white and black. I've got my black and my cadmium orange which makes a really nice dark brown or chocolate brown or even with some white goes to really light brown there. We're gonna need all this to kind of play with and dip into. And then I've got my primary yellow here and you can see that when that is mixed with some of these lighter browns. So let's 
take that milk chocolate over here. See, that's really pretty. That's another whole, whole another shade there to work with. A lot of variety happening in here, so we like to have a lot to play with. Let's warm that up, then more white. And we'll also be taking little bits of this rust, so a little bit of that. We still want a little bit of vibrant orange in there, but little touches of that too. So lots of shades to work in with. And remember, you can always come back and rewind over this to get a recap on that. I keep the videos up forever. And thank you so much for joining me here today. So grateful for y'all. All right, so I've got my little bit brush here. And I'm going to go ahead and work into this gray. So this gray was my Mars Black and Titanium White. And let's go ahead and kind of just twirl that into a nice fine point. And then we're gonna go ahead and just work right over the top here. And you can see I'm getting a little bit of that peekaboo. I'm gonna bring that closer so you can see. It's, it's very um, white showing through. So you can add a little bit of water to that to make it a bit more fluid, easier to have coverage. So it's already covering better. Grab a little more paint, a little bit more water. I don't want to forget this. I've got a little bit of this little that's thing coming through there. Grab a little bit of black, a little bit of gray, which basically just pulls this to a charcoal. I'm going to take this around the edges. This is my little bit brush here. Pull this along the top. And then I want this to be pretty dark right here. This is that line that goes across that fence, that fence line. So it's that wire that goes across the fence post. Also make sure you push this one in too. Where your line work is, you can go ahead and make a dark charcoal line. That's a pretty safe color. And go ahead and keep those impressions of the wood in there for you so you don't lose those. Just a little bit of that old wood. So we'll go ahead and basically kind of firm that up in the design with your dark charcoal here. This one you can go ahead and just kind of work into that. Same thing here, just kind of follow that along. This kind of feels like you make a light sketch with a delicate hand, gentle touch. This is also one of those things where you want to be uh, gracious with yourself and know that an old wooden fence post can most certainly look different than mine. And so if you get, if yours looks a little different, that's okay. But wood looks pretty gnarly with age and the weather and uh, it's not perfect. And so I'm intentionally being a little bit shaky with my hand. I don't want precise lines here. 
So I'm just almost intentionally, if you, in fact, if you have a shaky hand, it can actually be your friend on this deal. All right, now, we've got all these beautiful colors to kind of play with here. So we can certainly do that. I'm gonna go ahead and start to work in the darker strokes now for shading. And so I've got more of that brown. Again, remember water. Work that in. Kind of helps you be a little bit more fluid. So I've just been touching into my brown, maybe a little bit of that rust, picking that up. Every once in a while, I can kind of pull in a little bit of white, like in here, we'll just pull in a little bit of white, kind of pull it down like a vertical. And then let's grab a little bit of that bright orange with that, just a touch of black. squiggle it in there a little bit Let's grab a little bit of white grab a little bit of that bright yellow in there lighten up through this midsection Working with it while the paint's still wet. Let's work that up through there. Grab a little bit of water as we go, make it fluid. And you'll notice it kind of playing with some of those darker colors along the way. You'll get a nice soft little mix there. That is a good thing. And just kind of let those little happy accidents happen where they may because, again, the wood can be distressed in different places as your hand moves a little bit differently than mine. It'll just create a little bit of a different distress, but it will still look quite beautiful. white, touching that in. Let's go quite a bit darker in here. Let's grab a little bit more black. Touch a white, which will give me lighter shades of brown. Just kind of Wiggle the brush a little bit like that as you go. Put a little bit of black in here. And there's a lot of knots in the trees that are almost like little circles or long like raindrops. So if you kind of just push into a little bit of black and then just kind of take it for a little loop and then just kind of wiggle the brush. Those are some of the little patterns that you can tell your brain to do. A 
has a little knot there, so it's a little circle. So I'm gonna go ahead and come back in with a little bit of black. Wiggle, wiggle. My hand is a little bit unstable, I like that. So that gives me that little bit of wiggle. I don't want a perfect circle. So I'm definitely kind of shaky with it as I do it. It's getting a little bit uh, harder to get the paint to come down on the surface. I, I'm adding a little touch of water here. So that gives me a little bit more that fluid look there. Let's bring a little bit of yellow, a little bit of white. Grabbing some of the brights, some of the orange, some of the yellow, some of the white. I don't have to get too, too light, but I definitely want some of those rust hues in there. I'm going to pull this in here on the side. Touching into that black, which is giving me a nice little transition between the black and the lighter parts. Pulling that into the light. Pull in a little bit more of that brown and wiggle it in the base and wiggle it up. Now let's go darker in here through this midsection. Add a little bit of water, make sure that's really fluid. More brown. A little bit of white for some areas in there. There's my black. A little bit of white to kind of even pull in a little bit of charcoal there. And let's go back to the brown. Now again, this post is even different than the first one that I did, but again, it just almost looks like it's been weathered just a little bit differently, but I still love it. Just a little bit different though. Now I'm coming back in with that pack to kind of reinforce that darker part of the wire that comes in over the top. I definitely want that to pop in over the top here. So we're looking really great here. I'm gonna go back, see, get a little bit of some green, that darker green. I've got a little leaf over here. And those little leaf shapes are kind of like making a little parentheses and another little parentheses. Pop 
top of that bright yellow green right over the top there all right now we still have to do a lot of our texture over this grassy area in here still need to work that in because it still looks a little bit uh, incongruent to the rest of the style that's happening and actually got one little area here back in. You could do this with a little buddy brush and then also with your little bit brush. We're going to start to add some texture over the top of our grass. So I'm going to reload here, grab some more. I love all these earth tones that I have for my fence. So I'm going to keep those in place, but then also pull in some more greenery. So I'm going to grab some of my cadmium green. Size amount that's a big P, by the way, <laughs> more like a dime size amount. There, bright yellow green, get a visual. Oops, there we go. Um, I want some dark viridian in there, you never know. See if the mood strikes. And, you know, this is a field filled with, I think, some wild uh, flowers. So we might want a little cadmium red back there. So let's put that over there. So to begin with, I'm going to just take my little buddy brush, this is quarter inch flat tack on brush, and I'm going to go ahead and just kind of tap into the side, bright yellow, green, and I'm going to hit on the side of the brush so that it has some really nice texture here. And I've got this brown still, so I'm going to tap into some of that too much. In fact, that went a little darker than I wanted. I'll come back with bright yellow because I definitely want the contrast to stay intact around my fence post. I'm very delicately kind of come in around that. See, I've definitely touched into a little bit of brown, but then I keep touching into that bright yellow green. See, it's getting some nice texture now. And then you know what? We have some flowers happening. Just barely touch into that orange. Into those. Of white. I don't want to lose my fence post and the colors were looking a little too similar so I'm popping in with a little bit more of that bright yellow green to keep it really bright contrasting near the fence post. Still hitting on the side of the brush, coming just right next to that edge. And as I just tap, tap, tap on the side, again, it gives me a really beautiful texture. Bring that a little bit closer to the camera so you can see that. See, really nice and textural. I don't want to lose focus, but. Down. 
So continue with our, I call this my little pounce effect. I like to hit on the side of the brush, a little tap, tap, tap. Really nice texture happening here. Now the post is definitely out in front, so you want to make sure you don't come over the top. So sometimes you have to come back in and you might have to re-accentuate your post, making sure it's definitely in front if you happen to kind of pounce out over in front of it. I have little tiny areas to get into. So you can either kind of go on the edge, like I'm doing here, to reach in there, or you can switch over to your little bit brush here and kind of tap in with that smaller brush. For that textural look, and you're still getting into those smaller areas. I kind of barely tapped over that wire there, so I'm going to re-accentuate that here in a moment. Don't want to forget, so I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Still just creating lots of texture here. It's a lot more bright yellow green than you would think, just because you want to keep the contrast. And so you need to keep it light compared to all the other green leaves.
some of the brown here because we have our pink nearby as contrast, so a little bit of shadow. Alright, so now I want to add little bits of flowers, I think, in here. And so I'll be going back with a little bit more of the yellow and the red. So I'll do a pop of red in here. A light, light tap, just barely on the brush coming through there now. And now a little bit of yellow. My brush is kind of looking a little gnarly now, that's okay. I actually keep some of these around just in that condition for great pounce effects and then I buy more for the more precision work, precise work. So now we're getting that soft texture of a variety of colors happening here. Lots of layers. Patience. Just trust the process. Enjoy the journey. Let it take you a while. Kind of work some stuff out. Unplug a little bit.
Tapping back in a little bit more of that bright yellow. It's really pretty coming around the field there. See how it looks on the base? And tap that down. Just looks like your meadow behind there is just kind of basically just coming alive with beautiful little yellow wild flowers in the background. Do a little bit of an over tap here just to make sure that it looks like it's fully going behind there, and then I'm going to come back out and re accentuate the stuff in the foreground. So let's do that. Let's Come back in with a little bit, a little touch of water, and our black, and then let's re-accentuate this little wire that comes through in the foreground. go around the outer part of those little leaves out in front. This little bit, just a little touch of black, making some of those little center lines through the middle of the leaves. brush and grabbing just a little bit of that light brown and that bright yellow green. Okay, I think, I don't know, 
stressed out. Sometimes you're just not really sure when to finish, but I'm sure I'll see something more when I get finished. Sometimes in this position, I have a hard time seeing everything because I have a lot of film equipment between me and my painting, so I usually always find something when I'm done. But I think this is looking pretty good up in the monitor. And I'm going to put a bit more of a leaf happening from the hydrangea that I kind of plopped out there in my weird, wild, and wonderful countryside here. There's a little water spot. I'm gonna actually just let that dry because that's gonna actually, I could pick it up, but it'll lift up paint. So I'm gonna let that just dry right where it's at.
So sometimes when I want to add little baby leaves on the end of something, I'll just place it on the side of my little bit brush. Kind of lay it on in like a little diagonal. Creates a nice little texture. Okay, so I think we are done. All right, so we can sign the masterpiece here. And you can let it completely set up and dry, and you can do that with your permanent marker at the very end. I highly recommend this for beginners. Or you can paint it on. I would use your little bit brush, little tiny amount of water. Add that to the black, do a little twist here to get a really nice fine point. And then I'm going to just do a little tipsy right here, a little tipsy artist. and we are done okay so thank you so very much for joining me today we have done a beautiful scene out in the countryside with our fence posts in our garden little roses little hydrangea and I just love it so beautiful very peaceful great way to spend the afternoon all right so thank you again and if you have any questions or comments please leave it in the comments um, again, our chat doesn't work on YouTube, so please leave it in the comments. I'll be happy to get back with you after the class. And we have everything that you need for these painting kits on our website at tipsyartist.com. But I just want to thank you again so very much for joining us today. Y'all have been wonderful, and we will see y'all again very, very soon.